Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. Today I'm going to show you how to install these rear brakes on this 2007 Mini Cooper S. If you need these parts or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. We're going to take this center cap off. I'm just going to use a straight blade screwdriver. I'm going to use a rag so I don't scratch the wheel. Just get in here. There is a little slot on the cap right here. So pull that off. I'm going to loosen up these lug bolts. I'm going to use a 17 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Just crack them free before we lift the vehicle. Now I'm going to raise and support the vehicle. I'm using a two post lift. If you're doing this at your house, you can do it on jack and jack stands. All right, now I'll take these lug studs off or lug bolts. Just use my 17 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Now when I take the last one off, I'm going to hold the wheel on because otherwise this is going to fall. So I'll put a little pressure on the wheel while I take the last bolt out. Pull that out. I can grab the wheel and pull it off. Before we take this caliper off, on the passenger side on this vehicle, we have a brake pad wear sensor. I'm just gonna use some needle nose pliers. I'm gonna grab it right here. It's a good idea to replace this when you're doing a brake job, but it's not 100% necessary. Especially if you break it, then you should replace it. Just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. All right, so our sensor just cracked here when we were trying to pull it out. So we're going to have to replace this sensor. That's why it's a good idea to get a new one. All right, so take that off there. And over here on the bleeder, slide this cap off. And we can pull the sensor wire out of your way. And if you were going to reuse this, just set that aside. And using needle nose, trying to get it out, didn't really help us out. Yeah. This is just in there too long. It's been in here since brand new. So we'll just take the caliper off and get it off when the pads come out. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're working on the rear brakes before we pull the caliper off, you are going to want to make sure the parking brake is released. Um, if you have an automatic transmission, leave it in park. If you have a manual transmission, make sure you leave it in gear. And it's a good idea to chalk the front wheels so you do not roll. I'm going to take these two bolts out. I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet. This one's in there pretty good. And I can see that the stud is spinning. I'm going to use a 15 millimeter wrench to keep this caliper slide pin from spinning. Take this bolt out, do the same with the top one. It's on there pretty tight because there's some thread locker on there. I'm going to slide this caliper off. I'm just going to use a straight blade screwdriver and just pry it out a little bit. I can try to compress it, but it's really not going to compress too much. All right, got that off. I'm going to grab a bungee cord. I'm just going to slide it around this strut here. it onto the caliper here and then right there. Keep that out of your way. You don't want to put any tension on the brake hose. At this point I can take the pads out. These are 
frozen in there pretty good, so I'll take my straight blade screwdriver, get in there, pry it out a little bit. And as you can see, this is frozen in there pretty good. So we're gonna have to replace that. And same with this side. Pull that off. I need to take these two caliper bracket bolts out. They're a 16 millimeter, so I'll use a 16 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Let's just break them loose first. Then I'm going to switch to a 16 millimeter socket and a ratchet. It's kind of hard to reach those bolts, so just pull the socket off and loosen it up by hand. All right, then I'm going to hold the bracket while I take the last bolt out. I'm going to pull the last bolt out, then I will just grab the bracket and slide it back. All right, so we're going to take this bolt out that holds the rotor on. Um, I'm going to use this impact driver. You can get these at 1AAuto.com. And I'm going to use a T50 socket. Slide this on here. Hold this. You're going to hold a little bit pressure like you're loosening it, and then hit it with a hammer. Now I'll take my socket and my ratchet. Just hold the rotor while I'm taking this out. You could also use an impact gun if you struggle a little bit. If you have air available to you, pull that out. Pull the rotor right off. Here's our old brakes. Here's our new brakes from 1AAuto.com. As you can see, the shapes of the pads are the same. They have the same ears. Same spot for the pad sensor. The outboard pad is the same. The rotors are the same. The hats are the same height. Thickness is the same. Get yours at 1AAuto.com and you'll be ready to rock and roll. We're gonna clean this brake caliper bracket. I'm just gonna use a wire brush. Clean this area right here. We're gonna clean these pad clips, brake pad clips. Take a flat blade screwdriver, just get it underneath here, peel them off. Take that off. If the back's dirty, just clean this off a little bit. And if there's any rust in here, we're gonna clean this off. This will just make the brake pads slide better. Pad clip, we install, line it up, push it down. We'll do the same with the other side. Then we're gonna take these caliper slide pins, just hold the rubber grommet down, pull the pin out, take a little brake parts cleaner, spray that, take a rag and wipe it. And on the caliper side, just spray some down the hole. You can take the rag and try to clean some of that. Then I'm going to take some brake caliper grease, just put it on the pin. Slide the pin back in, make sure it seats the rubber grommet. Do the same with this side. All right, before we install the rotor, I'm just going to take some brake parts cleaner, wash it off. There is a protective coating on the rotor so that it doesn't rust. So we want to wash that off this side, also on this side. And then wipe it with a rag. Before we install our new rotor, there's a lot of uh, rust buildup on this hub. So I'm gonna just take a wire brush. I'm gonna clean this all up. Now we're gonna install the rotor. Just line the holes up. There's an extra hole right here for this bolt. This Torx bolt, it's gonna go there. Get that started. And I'll use my T50. So 
now I'm gonna tighten this down a little bit with my ratchet. Make sure all the holes are lined up good. You don't wanna tighten this too much, just snug. That just holds the rotor from falling off. I'm gonna install this brake caliper bracket. Just slide it over the rotor. Take the brake caliper bolts. I'll just use my 16 millimeter socket and an extension to try to get it to line up. Just get that started. Now I'll get the top one started. I'm gonna use a ratchet, and just snug them up. Snug, and then I'm gonna torque them. I'm gonna use my torque wrench and I'm gonna torque these to 48 foot pounds. Now we're going to install the pads in the caliper bracket. There is an inboard pad and an outboard pad. The difference is this has this little extra ears on top, whereas the outboard one is flat. This is where the caliper piston is going to sit and also the brake pad warning sensor is going to go in there. So we'll slide that on the inside. Just like that. And then this one's going on the outside. Next we have to compress this caliper piston. Uh, we need this special tool. We actually sell this tool at 1AAuto.com. It has different little ears on this so that we can take a extension and then line this up with the piston on the caliper. And take a ratchet and slowly tighten this down. You could spin this. As this is spinning, it's compressing the piston back into the caliper. It's pushing fluid back through the lines, back through the master cylinder, and up into the reservoir. It's a good idea to check your reservoir when you're done the brake job to make sure it's not over full adjust accordingly and that looks like it's down all the way and there's not any buttons on the actual pads that have to get lined up with anything so that can go on just like that. Now we're going to take the bungee cord off. We'll take the brake caliper slide it over the pads and the bracket, just like that. You will reinstall these caliper bolts. There is thread locker on these bolts. You can put new thread locker on, or if you get new bolts, generally they come with thread locker. Now I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter socket, a ratchet, and a 15 millimeter wrench. And I'm just going to hold the slide pin with the wrench, and snug up this uh, bolt, just snug that one up. And I'll do the same with this one. Now I'm going to use a torque wrench and I'm going to torque these bolts to 25 foot pounds. Your brake pad um, wear sensor may break, so we're gonna show you how to replace it and put a new one in. So with this broken sensor over on the bleeder, we're just gonna slide up this little bleeder cap. This is gonna come off here, and then there's a clip. This was clipped on over here, pull that off, and it's clipped in right here, and right here as well. And right here, just slide this through. Clipped in right here. Leave that clip there. And then there's a connector behind here. You can slide the shield down a little bit. 
We're gonna pull on the connector. It's behind this blue connector. Slide this down and out. If we pull it over here, it makes it a little easier to work on. Push this little button. And pull the connector out. So now we have our new sensor wire right here and connector. We wanna line this up, make sure it goes on the right way. It only goes on one way. If you flip it over, it's not gonna lock in. So there's like a horseshoe like curve on the bottom of this and then kind of like a little box on the top and then also a groove in the top of the connector. So get those lined up. Line that up like that and lock it in place. Now we're gonna fish this back up here and it's gonna get secured behind this blue connector back here. If you have to take the blue connector out, you can pull that out. I'm just gonna slide it behind it. And it's gonna click in back there. And this is gonna follow the other wire right here. There's a little uh, retainer right here. It goes on the the lower control arm frame. There is another thing to secure it right here. Depending on who makes the connector, it may, may be different, or who, who makes the sensor. So I'll take some needle nose pliers, just try to push this through. That looks good. And this is just gonna follow this other wire. And I'll hook this over here at the brake pad first. Just take this. This is gonna go on the brake pad with this little round piece facing the rotor. Take my needle nose pliers to help assist getting this in. Line this up with the inboard brake pad. And just push it on kind of like locks in place a little bit, just like that. Push it down, that's good. This is gonna connect to the bleeder right here. Just push that over like that. And then these will connect to the wires, just like that. We'll do the same with the other ones. A little bit tricky. And then slide that through, just like that. Now we're gonna install the wheel and tire. Before I do that, um, sometimes it's pretty difficult to install the wheel on this type of setup because it does not have studs. Um, so what you can do is get one of these kits we actually sell at 1A Auto. Um, this has the correct thread for this vehicle. You just slide these into here. Just like that. And we can take our wheel. You can line the holes up. Then it'll actually line those up, position that in the right location for you. We can install our lug nuts. And that kind of holds the wheel for you, so you don't have to try to balance it. Once you get those two lug nuts on, you can take these out. Put the other two lug bolts on and you're good to go. Now I'm going to use a torque wrench and a 17 millimeter socket and I'm going to torque these lug bolts to 90 foot-pounds. 
and I'm gonna do it in a cross pattern so that it torques the wheel down evenly. I'm just gonna go back and double check, make sure everything's tight. That's good. Now we're gonna install this center cap. There's a little nub right there. You're gonna line that up with any of these. Line it up straight like that. And just lock it in place. After we're done the brake job, we're gonna to wanna to pump the brake pedal because there's a little bit of an air gap between the caliper piston and the brake pads. So to eliminate that air gap, just pump the brake pedal. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.